Today, I've only got one question for you. What if? Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here. Today we're going over the wonderful Marvel Universe. No, but that's how we get rid of like a lot of time in my class. Why? Because we talk about Marvel and other TV things like all the... So today's project, we're gonna go into what if a little bit. The reason being is because we're doing a project in my ceramics class and I was like, you know what? I wanna have some fun today. So what are we gonna do? Slow down a little bit. There's a few people in the room that don't understand. Not me, I, I get it. For my ceramics class, they have to do coil pots, coil vases. You can only build these vases for so long before you're just kinda done making these vases. I just, I, I got, I'm so, so tired of making these. So I thought, what can we do that is way more fun than the traditional coil vase? Now, if you need to know how to make a coil vase, I've got like four other videos on this channel that would talk about how to make a coil vase. So this is, once you've made the coil vase, this is where you go next. I wanted to get to express to the kids that you guys can create anything that you, well, no, not anything, let's be honest. Let's talk about Greek pottery for a second. So for back in Greece, ancient Roman times, you would have these large vessels that would tell stories along the outside edge of them. Now, there's two types. You had the outside and then you had some that were like a big basin. It was on the inside too. So yes, there's multiple variants. For these pieces though, we start talking about these stories that they would tell on the outside of the vases. You would have the Hydra, you would have Homer's The Odyssey, you would have kings and philosophers and people receiving messages from the gods above. You had all these things that were being told and then that kind of got sidetracked really quickly into Marvel and Ego, the living planet, cr the Krills, Iron Man sacrificing himself to Thanos, Doc Ock coming out of the back. Hello, Peter. There was all these wonderful things that came out of them. Let's do a, let's do a what if vase. And, uh, and that really just kind of went down the rabbit hole of like things that we could do. So my initial thought for my vase is I definitely wanted to do the, oh, hello, Peter. We were, we watched the Spider-Man trailer and all of us were like, oh, oh so much, oh, then, oh, what? Oh, just so much good stuff. And why, why pull that back and say, we can't learn about that kind of stuff. What that's like the best stuff ever. Let's go down that rabbit hole. So anyways, back to the project itself. So students in class making a coil vase. After they got the coil vase done, the interior and the exterior have to be completely smoothed out. You wanna have a nice smooth surface because we're gonna be doing a lot of decoration on the outside. Now, once you have the surfaces smoothed, I put a little slip in between the cracks if I wanna have a little chunkier surface. And the reason I'm having a little chunkier surface is because we learned one ceramic technique in this project that is invaluable for most of the ceramics things that you do, and that is scraffito. Uh, scraffito is the Italian version, Italian word meaning to scrap. And what we're doing is we're actually scratching and, and carving the exterior of our vases slightly. For this, we're going to need a couple of materials, which is we have our vase, we're gonna need some red slip, which I've, I've made and I'll talk to you guys about, and then we need the carving tools. Now, most of my stuff that I like to do in my beginning ceram ceramics class is experimentation with the tools. I think it's an invaluable thing. Learn how the tools work, why the tools work, and what they do. It's an important thing to know. So once they have the vase completely done, then we're gonna make some red slip. Now for me, I have a ton still left of the red clay that I absolutely hate. I hate this red clay. And the reason I don't like it is because it stains everything. Uh, the tools, if it's a nice, I open up a fresh case of tools that are nice, they're clean, they're that perfect, pretty wood, uh, it's new like this. And if you get uh, the regular stoneware or the low fire clays on these, comes right off, no issue at all. This one has clay on it, this one does not. This one's a little white, whiter looking than this one. I don't like the red clay. It stains everything. The red clay has its place in some of the stuff that we use. If I'm doing more sculptural stuff, it's a great clay to use. Why? Because it's got a lot of grog in it or a good amount of really fine grog. And the grog is, is sand, it's in clay. It helps stability, it helps hold things up their shape a lot better. But for majority of the stuff that we make, even though we're doing a lot of sculptural stuff, I just, I don't care for it personally. Also, you have to use a lot of glaze to cover that stuff up, so no. So anyways, taking the clay what i'm doing is i'm tearing it down into small chunks placing it into a container filling that with water and 
turning it into slip. So we're just turning it into a very soupy, watered down version. Um, for me, I re do recommend take about three or four days to make it, put some clay in there, load it up with water, let the water melt some of the clay, and then take some of that top water, pour it off so you have less water in the container, blend up that clay as much as possible. Again, like another day or two, let the stuff settle, then pour it off so you got a nice concentrated. Because I'm using this red clay along with my other low fire clays, these are both two low fire clays. The red clay is more of an earthenware. The low fire stoneware clay is in the same firing temp range. So you're doing two clay bodies that'll sit on top of each other and shrink at the same time. So you won't get cracking. That is an important thing to know. If you're mixing different clays, clay bodies in general, if the clay body is of the same temperature and it's the same body style. So your earthenware clays, your mid fire clays and your high fire clays all different body types. If you have two earthenware clays, one is that stoneware white clay and the other one is the red clay. Both of those are low fire clays. They fire at the same temp. They also fought max fire out at usually cone 04 to 00. Um, I think the low fire one, white one doesn't fire that high, but regardless, they're in the same realm. So then you're firing everything together. They blend together well. If you're firing a high fire clay with a low fire glaze on top of it, that is not going to work out well because the low fire clay is going to shrink at a faster rate than the high fire clay. These things just don't play well together. Make sure everything is about the, is running the same or as similar to the same as possible and you should overall be fine. Take it with a grain of salt. Make sure you do your own testing just in case. Not held responsible if you screw up your kiln. Knowing knowing that kind of that those two play well together, and I've done a couple of the pieces where I'm doing this slip element, it works fine for me, and that's what we're doing in class for myself. Taking my big red jug of red slip, trailing that along the outside of the piece, spinning it around so I get a nice even coat. I want to do about two two to four coats of the red slip on the exterior of the surface. I want it thick enough, basically made its own surface and sealed up any white clay underneath so I can make sure that I have a nice clean surface so when I carve through and I fire it, I don't have those little spots afterwards because that just is like, oh, I missed a spot. Don't want any of that. So once that's done, let that dry out for a day, maybe two. Put a bag on top of it, loosely wrapped so it dries out slowly. You wanna have both of those sections homogenized really well. That's why my clay looks relatively damp. It's not gotten fully to the leather hard stage. I wanted to have both of those play together nicely. So the raw wet slip that I'm putting on top of the almost leather hard clay, if I'm putting those, that wet surface on top of the drier surface, both of those work out well together because the water levels in both are about the same. Meaning that the almost leather hard slip is not fully dried out. So if you put water on top of it, a, it's not going to change the shape. B, it's not going to repel it completely. So I wanted to have, make sure it's kind of in the, in the happy in-between zone. Now, once that piece is on there and I've got a nice full coverage, next we got to get to the design. Taking a simple sheet of paper, draw out your design. For me, what if? Uh, and I got the watcher guy in the middle there. What you're going to do is you're going to take the piece of paper and you're going to lay it onto the vase itself. Now, using a pen tool, one of those needle tools, looks like this thing. Okay, needle tool. Now this is an ancient, ancient technique. Not really, people people doing, the, doing this for centuries. You're going to dot through the piece of paper onto the vase. Afterwards, it should look like this. Drawing on this side, dot holes on this side. Now, once you have that design fully taken out on the outside, then we can go ahead and start carving it away. For this, you're definitely gonna wanna use the carving tools that have kind of that tapered edge to them. One of these wire loop tools. What I like about them is there's a slightly beveled edge on there, so you can use a little file to sharpen these up a little more, so you got a little more of a tooth to use to scrape. And you're just gonna slightly shave off the top layer of the red slip that we applied to the exterior of our clay. Remember, you were just scratching the surface. You're just pulling off that excess. You're shaving your piece now. So those of you who, uh, who've been shaving a while like myself, pretty simple to do. If you're not that well invested, nice and delicate shaving off that top layer. You're not trying to gouge into it. You're just trying to slightly peel off that out off that top edge, like peeling an apple. And that's how we have the what if vase. Notice it's not fired yet. I'm still working on that. Hopefully I'll have that done a little later and this will be a uh, behind the scenes section. But I did want to notice on the watcher. So after I drew him out, he had no features on the face and I've watched more episodes and they start showing more of his face the more episodes that you get into. And I want to do a little bit of a shadow effect on the face, but the eye was the essential. Why? Because the guy's a watcher. So he's watching you from the cosmos. So he has that kind of star element and it kind of, 
in the background. So I want to have that on there. Also because you're getting more into the mystic levels, definitely want to have the Sanctum Centaurum design on here from Doctor Strange, as well as one of Doctor Strange's uh, Hit the glowy circles so that he can pass through, but it's like a shield. It, it, watch Doctor Strange. I don't really remember the term off the top of my head right now, but I thought that'd be good. Uh, as well as some of the lines, if you've gotten as far as Kang, you know who that is. Um, this is that Japanese pattern, so I'm gonna put some gold glaze that I've got in between there. It'll look really wicked. And that's it. We just finish up doing our piece as we usually do. You're gonna fire it as you usually do, and you're gonna glaze it afterwards as you usually do. As always, don't forget that you put the name in the bottom of the piece on the outside. Get one of those little uh, nail dotting tools. Best thing ever that works well to carve into a piece and, and to write your name with it. Um, to take care of those things and let's go ahead and wrap up class as we always do i hope that you guys got some fun out of today's class i just love talking about marvel and having an art project where we could do the same thing that was great so love that as always don't forget to uh do the homework which is like subscribe like subscribe and share on all the various platforms get the message out there to as many teachers friends and students as possibly can educate the masses as what I like to do. Uh, don't forget if you guys had a question, comment, or concern during today's class, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions for my questions. Happy to answer those questions for my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. Until then, later guys. All right, time for a quick epilogue because I'm, I did happen to glaze the what if vase. I will tell you now, one, I'm wearing my gloves because it's still, it's about 200 degrees, still just pulled it out of the kiln. Again, don't pull pottery out of the kiln until you can hold it without wearing gloves, just for safety's sake. Um, but I'm impatient, I want to get this video to you guys. So, number one, I'm going to be reglazing this and refiring it. I'll go into that in a minute because this is getting, I can feel the, the heat through my hands. So I put some glaze on here the blue did not come out as much as I want it to, so I'm definitely gonna do another uh, couple swatches of that. Put some white glaze on the what if on the what if parts to make that pop a little more, and then did a wipe style across for the, there's a Japanese term, I'll put it here. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it's to give that gold. Um, it's old Japanese style for mending broken pottery. Use liquid gold to fuse the pieces together. It was gold and starts with an E emulsion. No, again, Google the term. I don't remember off the top of my head. But overall, I mean, it, it gives that essence of what I wanted to see. I definitely want to see like a Greek pottery style. I want to see something that showcased uh, the colors coming off of the coming off of the piece, just to give it a little more essence. Um, overall, not too uh, not too shabby. I like this a lot still. But there's always room for improvement. That's how I look at all my work. There's always room for improvement. I'll see you guys next class. Later, guys. As I said, I'm going to reglaze it and refire it. The reason that I'm doing that is because the glazes that I'm using were, they didn't go on strong enough. So I can do another coat because the glaze is still going to attach to the piece. Now, am I doing it today? No. Am I do it next week? Yeah, probably. The reason that I'm redoing it again is because the colors didn't pop out the way that I wanted to pop out. We're going to re-add some glaze to that because I added a real thin coat to the whole surface just because I was trying to knock it out as fast as possible. Usually glazing for me takes two to three days. Uh, I like to stack my colors and, and have those to get a certain look out of my stuff. So pop it back in the kiln, let it go again, and then uh, I'm gonna set the hold for about 45 minutes, which is a little longer. Usually do 20 to 30 to, for the gas release. Um, it's it, In case you have those little dot marks on your glaze, you do the hold so that then any trapped gases and air has a fully has the chance to escape. I'm gonna redo that, refire it, and I'll post it to Instagram. So it'll be on there.